this is a Brothers Grimm story which is called The Golden Bird. And it might be better called The Cunning Fox. Cunning? I like cunning. Cunning is kind of intelligent with a sharp edge, I think. Uh, it begins a long, long, long time ago, as many stories do, with a king. And there was a king who had an orchard uh, where lots of apple trees, lots of fruit trees grew. And one of his apple trees produced the most beautiful golden apple. Beautiful golden apple. And the king was very jealous of his apples and didn't want to share them with anyone else. So every evening, a servant counted a number of apples on the tree, and every morning one of them was missing. And the king was a bit cross about this, so he set, he set his oldest son to guard the tree. But after the moon had risen, the, the son <laughs> fell asleep, and so... And then <clears throat> the next morning, there was indeed an apple missing. So the king tutted. And the second night, he set his second son to guard the tree. But in the morning, one of the apples was missing. The third night, the king set his third and youngest son to guard the tree. And he stayed awake all night. And he had his bow and arrow with him. And he was amazed to see the most beautiful golden bird. This is a story called The Golden Bird. The most beautiful golden bird fly down to the tree, took one of the apples. And although the young prince fired his bow and arrow at the bird, I like to think he intentionally missed. And the bird flew off with the apple, but one of, leaving behind one of its golden feathers. So the next morning, when he showed his father, the king, the golden feather from the golden bird, the king said, I must have that golden bird. So the oldest son, the oldest prince, was sent off on a quest, on a journey, to go and find the golden bird. And as the young prince walked through a wood, a fox came up to him. Because this was a very, very long time ago, when animals could still speak. He wasn't too surprised that the fox spoke to him. And the fox said, when you get to the village, you will find there are two inns. There is an inn on one side of the road where there is singing and dancing and good ale and it's brightly lit. On the other side of the road is the quiet, dark inn. Stay at that one. So when the prince arrived at the village, he found it was exactly as the fox had said. But he looked at the bright lights and listened to the music from the first inn, and of course, he went into that one. The time passed. The prince did not go, did not return home. So the king sent his second son out on the quest, on the journey, to find the golden bird. And the second son, the second prince, walked through the wood and the fox came up to him and gave him the same advice. But when the second son, the second prince, got to the village, he saw his older brother in the brightly lit inn, singing and dancing. And so, of course, he went to join his brother. When the second son did not return home to his father, the king sent his third son out on the same quest, the same journey. And the fox appeared to the third son. But the third son listened to the fox 
and took his advice. Even though he could see his two older brothers through the window of the inn, having a really good time. But he stayed the night in the quiet, dark inn, and the next morning he saw the fox. And the fox said, I know where the golden bird is. I can take you there. At the end of this road is the castle, where the golden bird is caged. Outside the castle are soldiers lying asleep. Just ignore them, walk past them. Walk through the castle and there you will find the golden bird in a plain wooden cage. Next to the plain wooden cage is a beautiful golden cage. Take the golden bird in the plain wooden cage. So the prince hopped onto the fox's tail and he just rode on the fox's tail to the end of the road where there was a castle and lying on the ground outside the castle were lots of soldiers sound asleep. So the young prince walked through the castle until he found the room with the golden bird and there it was in a plain wooden cage. So the young prince looked at the beautiful golden cage that was hanging up next to the wooden cage and thought it seemed such a shame that such a beautiful bird should be in a plain wooden cage. I will take it in the golden one. So he opened the door of the wooden cage, put his hands in, and went to take out the golden bird, which then woke up and began to screech. Screech, I think birds screech. And this woke up the soldiers, and the soldiers came running into the castle, grasped hold, took hold of the, of the young prince and threw him into prison. And the next morning he was brought before the magistrates and before the king. And they sentenced him to death for trying to steal the golden bird. But the king looked at the young prince and said, You can, I will spare your life if you bring me the golden horse, the golden horse, which runs faster than the wind. So the young prince found himself outside the castle with the fox and the fox said, I know, I know where to find the golden horse. So the prince hopped on the fox's tail and together they travelled to the castle where the golden horse was kept in the stables and the fox said to the prince go to the stable and there you will find two bridles one is a plain worn leather bridle next to it is a beautifully embroidered golden bridle ignore that one Take the plain leather bridle and the horse will go with you. So the prince went into the stable and found the golden horse and it was just as the fox had said. There was the plain leather bridle and there was a beautifully embroidered bridle. And the prince looked at the beautifully embroidered golden bridle and thought, I think I'll ignore the fox and I will take that one because it's so lovely. So he picked up the embroidered golden bridle and went to put it on the horse. And the horse began to neigh and began to whinny. And this woke up the grooms, the people whose job it was to look after the horses. 
and they grasped hold of the young prince and they threw him into prison. And the next day, the young prince was brought before the magistrates and before the king. And although the magistrates sentenced him to death for trying to steal the golden horse, the king said, I will spare your life if you can bring me the maiden from the golden castle. So, the prince hopped on the fox's tail and the fox took him to the golden castle and said, the princess, the beautiful young woman, the beautiful maiden, will, when the moon has risen, go to the bathhouse to take her nightly bath. If you approach her and ask if you can kiss her, she will happily go with you, but do not let her say goodbye to her parents. So everything happened as the fox had said. And the prince approached the princess, the beautiful maiden, and she allowed him to kiss her. But she begged so prettily and so desperately to be able to say goodbye to her parents and cried buckets of tears that the the young man could only say yes. So when the beautiful maiden, the beautiful young woman, said goodbye to her parents, they ordered that soldiers should seize the prince. So once more he found himself in prison, and once more he found himself before the magistrates and before a king. And the king said to him, I will spare your life, even though you tried to take my beautiful daughter, if you can move the mountain that blocks the view from my window. You have eight days in which to do this. So, the prince did his best, but in seven days of trying to move the mountain, he had only dug a little bit of it. But the fox said, I can move the mountain by magic. So on the morning of the eighth day, the young prince awoke to find that the mountain had moved. And so the princess, the beautiful maid, followed him. And so the prince and the princess and the fox managed, <coughs> managed to gain the golden horse and the golden bird. And they were travelling back to the prince's own kingdom to see his father. So you think our tale might end there? But the fox gave the prince two more pieces of advice. Do not buy meat that is headed for the gallows, and do not sit on the edge of a well. And the prince said, what can I do to repay you for all your help and kindness? And the fox said, kill me, take your bow and your arrow, shoot me dead, cut off my head and cut off my paws. But the prince said, how can I possibly do that? That's a terrible thing to do. No, I can't kill anything. So the fox ran off into the woods. And the prince and the princess travelled alone with the golden horse and the golden bird until they came to the village with the two inns where the prince had last seen his older brothers. And there was such a, um, like there was commotion and lots of things going on. And lots of people milling around. And the prince stopped a stranger, stopped a man and said, what is going on? And he said, two men 
are being taken to the gallows today. Two men are to be hanged, for they cannot pay their fines. So when the prince realised that the two men who were about to be hanged for want of money were his own two older brothers, he gladly paid their fines. He paid their fines. And so they were released. So the three brothers and the beautiful maiden and the golden horse and the golden bird travelled through the woods. And it was a hot day. And as luck would have it, they found a well. And because it was hot, the young prince sat down on the edge of the well. And his older brothers pushed him. So he fell, tumbling down the well. But the well was dry. There was no water. At the bottom was moss, which broke his fall. So luckily, although he fell, he didn't break any bones. But there he was, stuck at the bottom of the well. But of course, his friend the fox came and rescued him and the prince held on to the fox's tail and the fox lifted him up out of the well and the fox said your brothers are not sure you have died they are not sure that you are dead they have set guards around the wood so as the prince was walking through the wood, he met a poor man and exchanged clothes with him, so no one would know that he was a prince. So it was that when the young prince arrived at his father's castle, he found he was wearing a poor man's clothes, so he, no one could recognise him. But there was a party going on to welcome home the princes, the beautiful maiden, the golden horse and the golden bird. And of course their father was overjoyed. But when the maiden saw the young prince, even in his tatty, poor man's clothes, she recognised him and was so overjoyed, she threw her arms around him and said, my true bridegroom has arrived. So the princess told the king all that had happened and how wicked and how bad the older two brothers had been. So the king ordered them to be executed. And of course, the third and youngest prince married the beautiful maiden. And only one thing was missing from their happiness. And that was the fox. Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you what happened to the fox? This time, this time, when, when the fox said to the prince, kill me with your bow and arrow, cut off my head, cut off all four of my paws, the prince did so, and from out of the fox stepped a handsome prince, the brother of the beautiful maiden, who had been placed under a curse by magic some years before. So now, all three of them, and the golden horse, and the golden bird, could live. Come on, this is your line. You ready? Happily ever after. But what the Grimm brothers didn't tell us was what happened to the apple tree. But I really like to believe that the young prince was so kind and so lovely that he would share those beautiful golden apples 
from anyone who chose to eat one. I think he did. What do you think? I don't know. Put something in the comments below. Um, lots more stories on my channel. Please do subscribe. <laughs> and please do check out um, the, the Brothers Grimm group. The, I think there's a link down there below. So enjoy stories, learn stories, tell stories, because stories like to be told and they're great travellers. And if you have golden apples, always share them with someone. <laughs> See you again soon.